This video is the 10th episode of the House to Home series. We'll be transforming the living areas and bedrooms of a semi-detached house on Sydney's North Shore for a family of four. Follow along as I take you through the design process all the way to a final tour of the space. The house was originally a single story with three bedrooms. However, it was recently renovated into a two-story home with four bedrooms. Upon entering the house is a short hallway that passes the first bedroom into the front living area with a staircase that leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Like many semi-detached house, the layout is long and narrow with a hallway that leads to the open plan kitchen, living, and dining area. We took on this project during its final stages of renovation to help furnish and decorate the space as well as filling in some gaps with budget-conscious custom pieces. Some of the initial challenges of these projects were to find a place to store shoes in the small and narrow entry, convert the front living room into a multifunctional space, utilize the empty space under the staircase in a budget-conscious way, and integrate a freestanding desk in the second bedroom with the existing joinery in a seamless way. The brief was to take a minimal approach in creating a warm and comfortable home which works seamlessly with the existing architectural features. The main areas of focus were the living and dining areas, and to lightly furnish the bedrooms and bathrooms with just the essentials. Right from the beginning of the project, the front living room was designed to be quite multifunctional. An extension to the entryway, but also a room that can function as a traditional living space without feeling overly formal. We went through a couple of iterations such as having a sofa bed but quickly realized that its bulkiness was not ideal and that it wouldn't be used enough to make up for its poor visual appeal. In the end, we settled for a three-seater sofa with an ottoman and side table beside it that could be moved around as desired. Since the front room is such a busy area of the house, the ability to rearrange the furniture proved beneficial. We could create an open layout to accommodate the high foot traffic the room experiences during the day and then easily adapt the layout for small gatherings as needed. The empty nook under the stairs was a challenge because of its awkward depth and angle. The clients wanted to use the space in a budget-conscious way, and all they required here was some additional storage space for shoes and to create a surface for a TV. We decided against installing a standard entertainment unit, as it would only fill half the length and depth of the space and just look awkward. A custom joinery looks great, but is very costly. Instead, we decided on getting modular storage units from IKEA that would span the width of the opening, along with some additional panels to fill in the gaps. It will be finished off with a custom-cut MDF board for a flush top and timber handles to tie the whole space together. Both the son and daughter's bedrooms need a desk. In each room, there was a large space beside the built-in wardrobes which was perfect for a desk. We filled the space with custom-cut tabletops, along with IKEA Alex drawers for extra storage to keep costs down. We decided to keep things simple in the open-plan living and dining area, with a standard living room setup that includes an L-shaped lounge, as well as a six-seater dining table. Our goal was to make this the most inviting space possible, so beautiful furnishings and decor choices were the main priorities, along with statement artworks. The final mood board features a light and neutral scheme with a paired back scheme, focus shifts to the textures and materials of the space, highlighting the richness and depth of the light oak and subtle textures of the soft furnishings throughout the space. The calm and serene atmosphere is continued through the addition of house plants. We decided to use an IKEA Plaza unit under the stairs. However, it unfortunately only came in 60cm or 80cm width, which left a 15cm gap. We cut a leftover piece of white MDF board to act as a filler panel and attach it to pine wood that is drilled into the side of the frame. We then use the same MDF panel to be the top panel to achieve a flush look. As a finishing touch, we added half moon timber handles and linear poles for visual interest. The architects did a fantastic job in modernizing the space, especially considering the very strict council regulations in the area. They added in skylights to distribute as much natural light as possible throughout the space. However, as they added an additional story to the house, the lack of natural light still posed a problem on the ground floor. The addition of void solves this problem, with angled skylights and frameless glass balustrade to let natural light stream into the main living area. The home now feels light, 
airy and modern. Before I continue, I wanted to briefly thank today's sponsor, Incogni. With more and more of our personal data stored online, we're increasingly at risk of having our data breached. Incogni is a company that helps you protect your data. Every year, the number and the scope of data breaches worldwide are rising, many of which involve services that we use day to day, like insurance or mobile operators. Basically, this means that your personal information is being sold or published online without you even knowing about it. The good news is that you have the right to protect your privacy by requesting companies to delete what information they have about you. The bad news is that it will take you years to do it manually. This is where Incogni comes in really handy. Their platform will automatically reach out to data brokers on your behalf and request your personal data to be removed from these websites, which means you're less likely to have your personal data exposed or sold online. If you've experienced data breaches or would like to get ahead and protect your data, then head over to incogni.com slash rlowell and if you're one of the first 100 people to use the link in the description, you'll get 60% off the premium subscription. Thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video. Upon entry into the home is a small hallway that features a compact copper shoe rack which is a convenient spot to store shoes for everyday use without enroaching upon the limited space the entryway offers. The first room to the right of the entryway is a spare bedroom that will be used by guests when they visit from time to time. The architects kept the original fireplace as well as the stained glass windows in this room so we kept furnishings to a minimum as per the client's request. The front living area is the room with the highest traffic flow as it is the pathway to all the bedrooms as well as the main living and dining area. The timber staircase has a handrail finished in solid black pot timber that matches the floor and features an integrated light strip to illuminate the path. Under the stairs is a unit that works perfectly as a surface for the serif TV while providing extra storage for knickknacks and shoes. Opposite is an ottoman and movable side table instead of a coffee table or chaise to make the space feel more open and also to provide a more relaxed atmosphere. Towards the hallway leading to the rest of the ground floor is a large cherry blossom painting positioned between two spotlights to create a gallery-like feel. The main living area has a light and neutral scheme dispersed with light oak wood accents for added warmth that complements the black blood timber flooring. Green and brown is sprinkled throughout the space as the main accent color to create a relaxed and earthy feel. The clients wanted to blur the indoor and outdoor spaces into one, so having this color scheme facilitated a stronger connection between the indoors and nature. During the warmer seasons, the sliding door can be fully opened, creating a seamless transition between the two spaces, which is perfect for entertaining large groups of people. This space was finished off with some differentiating textures like a travertine table lamp, a linen floor lamp with a wooden pole, and a beautiful wool rug to add extra dimension to the space. The dining area features an oak dining table and chairs with pale grey upholstery. The table is lit by a replica modern arc floor lamp as per the client's request. They really love the way it looked and how it functions as a pendant for the dining area. An Aboriginal artwork by Aziza Pozum hangs across from the dining area between two spotlights to continue the gallery feel and add another splash of color into the space. As the sun sets down, warm ambient lighting fills the room together with up-down wall sconces along the open plan area and the void. All of the bedrooms and bathrooms are kept really simple, with just the essentials as per the client's request. The master bedroom features a walk-in with skylight just before the ensuite. Solar blinds were installed to allow for better light control. And that wraps up the 10th episode of the House Home series. If you're based in Sydney or Melbourne and would like to be featured in the House Home series, you can register your interest via the link in the description box below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.